So welcome, 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 Charles. So good to connect as always, my beloved colleague. As always, we begin all things by acknowledging our ancestors, the original stewards of the various lines we're on. We acknowledge all those who toiled without compassion or compensation. We acknowledge all our elders and community stalwarts whose shoulders we stand on as we share, build, and learn together for our collective liberation and sovereignty. So please, Charles, introduce yourself to our listeners and viewers and tell us about your remarkable work. So yeah, thanks, thanks, Victor. It's uh, it's an absolute pleasure, like uh, having this having this conversation and sharing our our work with uh, with the broader community. So I'm Charles Buchanan. I'm the founder and uh, CEO of Technology Helps. And uh, by by way of background, I'm a computer engineer, uh, entre serial entrepreneur. Spent many years in corporate, and I founded this organization uh, several years ago. Uh, seven and a half, almost eight years now, with w when the pendulum shifted in my in my world from making making money in corporate to making a difference in community, and uh, technology helps is 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 a true is a true social enterprise where we are a mission based organization with a focus on ending technology poverty, and uh, we most of the, the concentration of our work is in ending technology poverty in the social purpose sector, which is uh, nonprofit organizations, charities, co-ops, and other social enterprises. But there's also our community work where we do a lot of work with helping around digital equity and the use of technology for solving uh, social problems. So, so that is technology helps. And that is uh, us in a word, like we're, we're national. We have uh, our team is of about 20 people are across Canada, and we've worked with well over two hundred organizations in our eight year, in our seven and a half year history. That's absolutely remarkable. Yeah. Absolutely remarkable. We give thanks. So, what inspires you most about your current work? Okay, what what inspires me? It's the it's it's being part of making a it's being part of making a difference. So, if technology helps. Technology in its in in and of itself is an enabler of of good, enabler of social change, enabler of things that organizations need to do. So, so we are not the, our work isn't on display for the most part, but our work manifests itself through the, 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 the great work being done by the, by the organizations and the people that we serve. So we, we enable in an organization to feed more people, to house more people, to, to advocate for change for, for disadvantaged people in community, based on some of the organizations we serve, to to help with to assist artists and to create cultural change, those are the things that that so that matters to me. So when I when I go out in community and I meet with the with leaders of organizations we serve or the people that are being served by these organizations, I see our work at play, and uh, because they it's hard to put a finger on. Okay, where's the technology? Is it an app? Is it no? It's it's a lot of the enabling things that, that that allow for people to do better with data, do better with their processes, to be safer organizations. That makes that makes it that 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 that, that base, that's so rewarding in in, uh, in that sense. That's incredible, sir. That's incredible. So, what challenges and barriers do you face in your work, and what are some of the approaches you and your colleagues take to overcome these challenges? So, like the challenges have the challenges have 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 morphed over time. And uh, the biggest challenge that we face sort of in, uh, in, in this work is that, that we're tackling a problem that's dynamic, that's, uh, that's evolving. So if you're to say, well, let's solve technology poverty. What is technology poverty? It's, a, it's, it's an organization or a person or entity not having the requisite digital capability, which is tools and skills and, and safety to engage effectively and be their best selves in the in the spaces that they're trying to that they occupy or the space or, or or in the work that they're trying to do. So what is the optimal tech digital package to have? Or how should an organization or a person structure themselves or arm themselves or equip themselves to be as effective as that? The it's the yeah, the what's what's good technology today or effective technology today isn't the same as it is tomorrow. So trying to deal with with trying to to have have a, an issue to solve a problem that's changing that's morphing and changing is the big is a big part of the challenge like what's a time when the issue was 
education. And that still remains the issue where people just don't know what they don't know or don't know what solutions should be in place or what's what's necessary or what or what's appropriate for them that that's still that's still the case but right now a big part of it is like in trying to solve this problem in the so in a nonprofit sector for example is f funders and, and investors have a have a have a funding or investment model that's static that's trying static by nature or that's trying to solve a dynamic problem so they'll constrain organizations with with rec with requests or demands for for capital investment for example whereas what's required is an ongoing investment in in a technology solution that's not available as a, as a, as a purchase but it's available as a service so these are a number of things where the the, the solutions required are not aligned with the current model or the current structure of this of of the sector, and the same thing applies, say, in community where you have where you're trying to help community members with digital equity challenges. Giving someone a computer <laughs> and walking away has done very little for them. Whereas, do they have the skills to to interact? Do they know what to do with it? Do they have the necessary support with? With keeping it going, and do they and can they can they engage with it safely? Is cybersecurity a concern? So if you do not give, if you do not consider the whole package, but or just think that well, I've solved the problem, I've given them broadband internet, and I've given them a device, you haven't, you haven't, you haven't solved the problem. And there's this uh, ignorance of of those issues on the part of of investors or the or the providers or the people who are trying to help that in some way only partially solves the problem. Absolutely. And you've been working in the cybersecurity space for decades. Are there any actionable insights you can provide to nonprofits? Like, like what does that work look like for you in the context of the nonprofit and charitable sector? Uh, so cybersecurity is, uh, I have I have way too much to say on that. So the first thing I would probably say is that you are likely not doing enough. There are, there are no shortcuts for, to cybersecurity and, uh, and minimal security doing the bare minimum is putting your organization at risk. So when I, I like we're now, we're out there talking to nonprofit leaders about cybersecurity and cybersecurity is fairly, I, I would like them to just think about it differently. I, I would like them to not think, to acknowledge that it's not technical. Cybersecurity is enterprise risk and it's risk to your, in, your enterprise information assets. So what is it that's important to you in the organization? And that's the information. It could be in your systems. It could be your data. It could be your client. It could be a stakeholder in records. What's important and what could happen to it? And if you start thinking about it in those terms, you realize that a firewall isn't your answer. Uh, a, a, a training, a, one, a single one-off training program is not your answer. It has There has to be this comprehensive, holistic view of this is my... These are my treasures, and these are all the things that could happen to it. And then what am I doing for that protection? And that protection isn't just, I'm going to lock it away, but would you know if something, if, if, what could happen to it? Have you assessed those risks? Uh, have you taken appropriate measures to protect yourself against those risks? What could happen? Would you know if it happened? Do you have detection systems in place? And when something does happen, do you have a response, a coordinated intelligent response that satisfies your stakeholders to show that you're keeping your organization safe and are you creating a culture of safety which i say it's like teaching your your kids to lock the door and not walk down dark alleys it's just it's so there is so much so it's about seeing it holistically seeing it as more than just something i could just go and buy i did nobody can just go and say i just bought my cybersecurity. no it's it's program, and that's why we've created something like the Ever Secure program, which is an overall cybersecurity as a service, which we do in partnership with organizations. And we've done it with, we're doing it currently with over 50 organizations across the country. That's absolutely remarkable. And thank you so much for your leadership in terms of this. This is brilliant. So, so let me ask you a question. Do you have a set of key priorities right now as it relates to technology helps? Mission, mission, mission. No, there are our key priorities. Like right now, it's about our goal. Like we've, we, we've, technology helps has gone from 
trying to just solve the problem, hacking and slashing to putting systems in place. So we have a system of support in place and a system of security. And we see those as, because a, a systemic problem could not, will not be solved by one-off solutions. So we've got hardcore systems in place that we've, we've developed over the years. And now it's a matter of, it's really the primary goal now is engagement, letting people know what we find in partners to work with. So it's around engagement, it's around partnership, it's and it's around it's around doing doing more of more of our great work. How do you feel about the future of technology, um, digital adaptation, digital resilience, um, cybersecurity, all these subsectors in the nonprofit sector and the future of Canada? what's today today yeah i'm feeling somewhat optimistic today so i will i'll give the i'll give the optimistic response like it's uh first and foremost we're not doing enough and uh and on to and and if we and if we think there and there are no shortcuts there are no shortcuts so we're if we don't i'm if we don't acknowledge or if we don't recognize the the critical nature of some of these issues, we're going to be in serious trouble, right? So one of the good, but I'm encouraged that people are seeing the risk of that, seeing that there's, yes, there are risks out there. People are seeing that there's a need for digital, that, that if you do not transform or change, I'm seeing more adaptation rather than transformation of, techno, of organizations, you will die. But the, the, the cyber risk, which is which is huge and it's changing and it's dynamic. It's coming at you. If we do not do something about it, we will. There will be there will be carnage. So on one hand, yes, it's uh, it's very dangerous and it could be a, it could result in a bad outcome. But on the other hand, we're no longer having to. We're seeing more people who are who are aware and looking for a path forward. They're no longer paralyzed. So I'm I'm encouraged by what I see. So I, I see a readiness for change, which is encouraging. Do I see the change happening as quickly? Do I think all the resources are in place for that right now? Not yet, but the, but the readiness is there, which is uh, which is what I'm, which is what I'm excited about. That's incredible. So, what is your ultimate goal, and what does success look like and feel like to you and your colleagues? What is success like when you're when you're swimming again? When you're and uh, I don't know if you. I think success comes in in the form of acknowledging your wins or as you go as throughout like there is no there is no end point when you know like I mean when we started this work someone said so when are you going to end tech when are you when do you think you'll have you'll end technology poverty <laughs> and because that's her mission and 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 no and that's when it hit me that wait a minute is that a valid mission to end technology poverty where can it truly be ended or is that really is that what we would consider success or should we consider success the small gains that we're making with you know okay today someone else was was supported somewhat we kept another organization safe we you know somebody else is more educated you know we've got uh an investor government or corporate that that now gets it we've gotten more support to it so i think it's just really uh it's it's not just keep on keeping on, but it's just not just noticing that the progress we're making and uh, and and I, I think that is success. It's just being it's it's being in the moment and doing all the right things and just uh, and yeah and celebrating the small the small wins. Ashe, ashe. So my last question: Do you have any closing thoughts or calls to action for our listeners and our viewers? Do not despair. Like I mean, so I'm. I appreciate the awareness that people have that you have now for for technology, and I and I would like people to not to be mindful of the dangers out there, and and re and and realize that there are ways to go about. There, you you can be kept safe, and uh, just keep uh, and no, just just start thinking about it as a in a broader sense than just an individual sense more of a system approach than just an individual approach because this is these are these are big systemic problems i so appreciate you i so appreciate your leadership as always charles you have no clue and we close the way we began this interview by acknowledging the original stewards of the various lands we're on we acknowledge all our ancestors we acknowledge all those who toiled without compassion or compensation 
We acknowledge all the elders and community stalwarts whose shoulders we stand on as we share, build, and learn together for our collective liberation and sovereignty. Thank you so much for all that you do for so many.